want to look at something this morning uh, that is very practical. Last week we looked at what I entitled Consider Your Ways, just very practical stuff. And uh, today I want to look at what to do when you don't know what to do. How many people have ever been there? You know, should I buy this? Should I not buy this? Should I wait to do this? Should I not wait to do this? Should I say this now or should I wait to say this? Or should I say something or should I not say anything at all? I think uh, there's a practical sense that all of us sometimes wonder what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why to do it. And uh, I think that there are some things that we'll see today in this message that will help you uh, what to do when you don't know what to do. And these are very, very practical things. There's a scripture in Psalms that says this. It says, show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. Now, if you just leave that there, one of the things that I want to talk about, too, and how many times, uh, sometimes, do you maybe not even know what to pray or how to pray about something? Now, I believe we pray the Holy Ghost, but I also believe that we can pray the Word of God. And many times we don't think about the Word of God as being a prayer and so if you don't know what to do and when to do it and how to do it, when, this is a good scripture right here to write down. Psalms 25 verse 4 says this, show me the right path, O Lord, point out the road for me to follow. What a great, great prayer there. Father, I thank you today in the name of Jesus that your word is true. I thank you, Father, that your word is a lamp unto our feet, that it guides us, that it directs us, that it shows us. Uh, that it helps us, and we thank you, Father, for the opportunity now to look at your word and to be changed by it, to find direction in our life and hope, and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. amen. The first thing I want to look at here, there are seven things, and really there's a gazillion things, and there's a gazillion ways to look at these that I have up here, uh, but I have seven to give today, seven things to consider doing when you don't know what to do. The first one is this, ask God. Yeah. Ask God. Now, I want to stop here before I even read the fullness of this. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, Jesus says this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Right. Now, here's what's interesting about that scripture is we quote that and we know it, but we miss what it says is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. What we miss is seeking God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is God's will and God's way of doing things. So what I'm seeking is, God, how would you do this? In what way and manner would you do this? How would you do this? When would you do this? What is the way that you would do this? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, righteousness puts us in right standing with God. But righteousness also shows us the right way, the right direction, and the right path to take as well. And then all of these things will be added up to you. What things are we talking about? We're talking about the things that we are not knowing what to do and how to do them and when to do them and the way to do them. And so when we look at this, the first thing we should do is ask God. Now, the reason I'm saying this is many times we'll ask people and we'll ask ourselves. The other thing we do is we seek out a hundred things and we seek out a hundred ways. How many people are like me? I love Google. If I don't know how to do something, I mean, the other day I was... Uh, David McTee, I was going to put an air filter, air cabin filter in my Kia. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that, but someone does. There is hundreds of videos, and you just watch that two-minute video. It shows you how to take your glove box down and put the filter in. And do. If you don't, even I, I started, there's some Bible words that I don't know how to say. So I've got a little microphone on my Google, and I'll say, how do you say this word? And it'll come up, and even a little voice will come on and tell me how to say that word. You say, what are you saying, Rob? I'm saying this. There are many times, if we're not careful, we'll ask Google, and we'll ask ourselves, and we'll ask our friends and our family before we ever ask God. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about this is, is in seeking God first, we find his wisdom and direction that we can build our life upon. Because what I've found in my life is when I don't ask God first, I take steps that I shouldn't take. I do things that I shouldn't do. 
I say things that I shouldn't say, and I make choices that I shouldn't make. And so when I seek God first, what I'm doing is saying, God, bless me before I say my first word. God, bless me before I take my first step. God, bless me before I make that decision. Because what many times I do is I do it, and I say it, and I make that, and then I ask God to bless it and show me. And he says, if you would have asked me first, I would have... <laughs> Allowed you not to experience so much heartache. And so seek God first. Ask God because he knows what you don't know and he sees what you can't see. Now, that's so simple and it's so practical. If you let it this morning, it would just go whoosh, right over your head like an airplane. But here's the reason that I ask God. Jeremiah 33, 3 says this. And he's saying this, call unto me. Saying this to Jeremiah the prophet. Call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Now, that's the New King James Version, but what I want you to get and see is this, is he's saying that I can show you things that you don't know, and I can show you things that you don't understand, and I can help you with what maybe you're confused about or trying to figure out. If you will seek me first, I will show you things because I know what you don't know and I can see what you can't see. I've got a perspective because I see your end from the beginning and beginning from the end. And if you will seek me first, I will show you what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. And the reason I'll show you. See, I believe that God's word reveals God's will. I believe that God's spirit confirms things. I believe sometimes that he uses people to confirm things. But I want to say something. I believe that God is God and there are some things that we don't know and we don't understand. He says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. They are higher than your thoughts. And so when we seek God, when we don't know what to do. Because when we don't know what to do, sometimes we get frustrated or we become complacent. But if we will seek God first, I believe that he will reveal to us what we don't know. Woo. Through confirmation, through circumstances, and through situations, ask God because God knows. Number two, do what's right and don't get frustrated and do something you'll regret. Woo. When you don't know what to do, here's what happens when you don't know what to do. If you're not careful and you become frustrated, you'll do something that you regret. Right. When you don't know what to say and out of frustration you say it, you'll use the regret. Say, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I wouldn't have done that. I wish I wouldn't have bought that. I wish I wouldn't have gone there. I wish I wouldn't have. And we get into wish I would have, could have, if we would first just sit back and realize that if we would do the right thing and not get frustrated, then we won't do something we regret. Every time I think about regretting, I always think about uh, Ishmael and Isaac. In the Bible, it was interesting because uh, Abraham and Sarah were beyond childbearing years, but God came with a promise. When God comes with a promise and he doesn't move in your time, don't move ahead of him because if you do, you will create things in your life that you still have to deal with. So the promised child was Isaac and he came, but before he came, there was Ishmael and Ishmael was still there and Isaac still had to deal with Ishmael and what it's called is an illegitimate thing. And when we get frustrated and we move ahead of God, we produce illegitimate things in our life that we still have to deal with. Waiting when desiring to see change and not seeing it is the most difficult discipline you'll ever develop. Thank God I have these notes in front of me because the Holy Spirit gave me these last night. I was typing as fast as I can. I want to read that again. Waiting when desiring change and not seeing it will be the greatest discipline you ever develop. When you're waiting and you want to see someone change or you want to see something change or you want something to happen and you don't know what to do to make it any different, one of the greatest disciplines you'll ever desire is waiting when you don't see what it is you want to see and moving ahead of what God is trying to do in your life. What to do when you don't know what to do, one of them is do what's right and don't get frustrated 
Here's another thing. When you force things, it will create illegitimate things in your life that you still have to deal with. So what it does is it produces something that you didn't even want because you acted out of frustration and moved ahead of what God was doing because you didn't know what to do. You just went ahead and did something. Now, I'm going to get in this and try to bring this full circle because there are times where we don't need to do anything. And then there are times that we need to do something in spite of not knowing what to do. Uh, you just confused me, Rob. Well, I hopefully I'll connect these dots and show you what I mean. But here's what I'm trying to say is this, is when we move ahead in frustration, we usually force things out of God's timing and out of God's will. I'm not saying that we just sit back and do nothing. But at the same time, we can't force things out of God's timing and out of his plan and out of his purpose because we'll have illegitimate things in our life that we've produced along the way that we still have to deal with. How many people still have that dog that you have to deal with? That payment that you have to deal with? That bill that you have to deal with? That person that you have to deal with because of the decisions that you made when you don't know what to do, what do you do? Here's number three. Do what you know to do until you know what else to do. Do what you know to do. Here, here's the thing I've learned, Janice, is sometimes I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say about a situation or a circumstance, but I still know what I should do about other things. And if I'm active in those things and allow God to work in my life and shape my life and mold my life, then I will have more peace in my life and produce the things that glorify God. Do what you know to do until you know what else to do or until you obtain what you desire. Here's one of the things I would say. If you don't have what you desire yet, then keep working at what you have until you have what you desire or what it is that you desire to obtain. Keep on working and keep asking God to show you. It seems to me, and I want to say this, it seems to me that God is more moved by movement than he is complacency. It seems to me that any time that God moves and he works, that he's working on someone that's moving. So in other words, what I'm saying is this, is I don't want to produce things in my life that are illegitimate that I still have to deal with by making the wrong decision and doing the wrong thing. But then I don't want to sit back idly and do absolutely nothing and expect God to do everything for me. God wants to work in cooperation with you. When I think about Elijah and Elisha, he was out plowing in the field when the prophet came along and put the mantle on him and the anointing on him. He was active in what he was doing. So how many people know James says that faith without works is dead? You say, Rob, you've done confuse me. I'm glad because I want you to take these two tensions and understand them because when you don't know what to do, what you'll do is you'll do nothing or you'll do usually do the wrong thing. That's what I'm trying to say. When you don't know what to do, if you're not careful, you'll either do the wrong thing or you'll do absolutely nothing. What I'm saying is this, is do what's right and do what you know to do and do what you... How many people, because once we've done something or said something and we say, I shouldn't have said that, do you understand what I shouldn't have said that is telling you? You knew you shouldn't have said that. So most of the time when I do things, there's something in me called the Holy Spirit that allows me to see that I probably shouldn't have said that or I probably shouldn't have done that. Be sensitive to that and don't try to force the will and the things of God in the wrong way, in an illegitimate way. Allow God to work on your behalf. Number four says this, seek godly counsel. Now one of the things that I want to say, and I want you to get this is, is no one is God. And no one is a substitute for God. No one is the Holy Spirit and no one is a substitute for the Holy Spirit. But I want you to see and get this. God uses people. Now this is number four. Number one, I had down and seek God, ask God and do that first. But there are some times that I've learned and here's a scripture for this that I want to read. It's out of Proverbs. There's many Proverbs scriptures that say this. But where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Now, Proverbs is full of this. But I tell you, one of the things I've learned, and I've learned this process 
through my life is I seek God first. And then there are men and women in my life that I seek and ask opinions from because they have experience that I don't have. They have insight that I don't have. There's someone in your life that sees in your life what you can't see. And that's who you want to speak into your life. You don't want someone just speaking into your life all the time and, and telling you what you want to hear and telling you what you already know. I want someone to speak into my life that sees what I can't see and knows what I can't know. And that's why I want to talk to God first. But then there's also a time to seek counsel. And I have pastors and I have friends and there are people that I fellowship with and talk with and say, hey, what do you think about this? And I want to bounce this off of you. And, and they might see something in me that I don't see. They might see something in that situation that I can't see or that I don't know. And so they can offer insight and wisdom that I don't have. Now, I just heard a pastor that I uh, really, I, I love the guy to death. And he's making a decision uh, after being at his church for 27 years. He's moving to California to pastor a church. And he told his congregation something that spoke to me. And this is a plan that I'm, I'm going to use because I, I believe in him. And I believe in the God in him. He said this. He said, the first thing I do is I seek God. The second thing I do is I seek my wife and my family. Because he said, if my wife and I are not in agreement, we are one and the thing's not going to work. If my family's not in agreement, then... It's not going to work. And I'm saying this for some reason today. There's some people that just say, I make the decision and that's the way it is and everybody can just live with it. I think we could use a little more wisdom and say, hey, I'm going to seek someone else and I'm going to seek their counsel. And Here's the other thing is I can seek someone's counsel, but it doesn't mean that I have to listen to everything that they're saying, right. and it doesn't mean that I have to agree with everything that they're saying, and it doesn't mean that I have to do everything that they are saying to do. It just gives me another perspective and another voice in there to come into agreement to do the right thing because there are some times where I don't know what to do. Right. <laughs> what to do when you don't know what to do, one of them is seek, and I've got this up here, number four, Seek godly counsel. Seek godly counsel, not just any counsel, but godly counsel. Number five, trust the Lord's timing and don't force your agenda or timeline. What to do when you don't know what to do. Trust God's timing and don't, here it is again. Don't force your agenda or your timeline in that. And allow God to move. God's timing is perfect. How many people know that? Amen. How many people know that there are seasons in life that we all go through? How many people know it's a cold winter season now? It's icy. It's cold. I have on a sweater. I've got on boots. I noticed today how many people had on boots today. Because it's that season. And what you've got to do is not get frustrated when there's a transition leading you into the next season of life. And the next season of what God has. Because when July comes, hopefully I won't wear, be wearing boots and a sweater. Come on, somebody. But I've got to be patient and realize that, hey, this too shall pass. And God is a God of seasons. And God is a God of timing. And I don't want to force something. How many people know I'd look foolish dressed? When, you, when I leave here, I'm going to have on a toboggan. I'm going to have on gloves. I've got on boots. I've got on a sweater. I've got on a down coat. I'm going to have it zipped up around my neck. How many people know I'd look foolish at a July 4th picnic <laughs> dressed like that? You say, what am I saying, Rob? I'm saying this is when we force our agenda and timeline, we end up with things that God doesn't want us in a season where we are no longer <laughs> and we look foolish and we become frustrated. Here's what I want to tell you today is this. God's timing is perfect and this is astounding to me and I've preached this before but I want to bring this up again because you need to hear it and you need to be encouraged. God knows our end from our beginning and our beginning from our end. And the Bible says that he establishes 
our ways and our steps. So what it means is he goes out to the end of my life and comes back to the beginning of my life and walks me from the beginning to the end. And sometimes I don't know what to do because I'm not God. Sometimes I don't know what to do because I've never experienced that. Sometimes I don't know what to do, so I've got to wait and trust God. Sometimes I don't know what to do, so I've got to just do what I know to do. Sometimes you just... Someone needs to hear. Sometimes you just got to get up and brush your teeth and comb your hair and make your bed and go to work and believe that God is faithful and that he sees you. You're, sometimes you just got to put one foot in front of the other and just be a mom and just be a wife and just be a husband and just be a person and just allow God to be God and to receive his peace and to receive his glory. I think so many times we're weighed down with things that God said, if you would just relax and receive my peace, you'd be a lot better off. Yeah. Whew. We'll look at the next one, number six. Number six, be patient and walk in your purpose. How many people have trouble being patient? I don't even like when I pull through McDonald's and they serve. Can you uh, pull up here and we'll bring your fries out to you? <laughs> I want my fries and I want them now. You know what I've learned sometimes is being patient has saved me. When I've learned to wait, it saved me because... I want to tell you today is when you get things sometimes is exactly when you need to get those. Now, I want to say this too when I'm talking about this. When I talk about walk in your purpose, can I say two things to you? When you don't know what to do, sometimes the frustration comes because everybody else is doing something. Everybody else seems to have this life. And it's amazing with social media, we talk about this, but really what people see is our highlight reel. You know, they see the 12th shot and 12th selfie that you took of yourself. <laughs> they see the filter. They, they don't see what you look like this morning when you rolled out of bed. Come on, sometimes what frustrates us I don't know what to do. Like, what do I do when I don't know what to do? Sometimes the reason I feel like I should just do something is because it looks like everybody else is doing something. So if everybody else is dancing, then I probably should dance too. And God's saying, you just stay in your lane. You just walk in your purpose. Because this is an individual race, and this is not about what they're doing. It's about what I'm doing in you. And if you run ahead or lag behind, you will miss what it is that I'm trying to do and show you and develop in you. How many people are thankful for that? That relieves a little bit of pressure because sometimes what happens to us is we look at someone else and we compare and we see what they're doing. And so we just feel like that we should have to do something. But stay in your lane and walk in your purpose. And oh boy, this is another one. Don't compare. Comparisons will rob your joy. It will steal your joy. You are you. You walk in your purpose for God's glory and allow God to do what it is he wants to do in you. Don't miss what is by always looking at what could be. That's not another point. This is under this point. Be patient and walk in your purpose. How many people know sometimes we miss what's right in front of us because we're looking at what we... We miss the moment of where we are because we're looking at how things could be or the way we want things to be. Here's something I've said for years and... This has really given me peace, and I pray that it gives you peace as well. If it hasn't happened yet, maybe it wasn't supposed to have happened yet. So many times we pray for things, and we don't know what to do. we got to do something to make it happen. And it's interesting because spirits that we talk about in the Bible, one of them is the spirit of Jezebel. And most of the time when we talk about the spirit of Jezebel, we talk about Jezebel who was a woman. But you know what the spirit of Jezebel is? 
It's you're not doing what I want you to do, so I'm going to do it for you or find someone who will do it for me. You know what the spirit of Jezebel is? The spirit of Jezebel is, God, you're not doing what I want in the way I want to do it, so I'm going to do it or find someone who will do it for me. And I want to tell you today in the name of Jesus, sometimes when you don't know what to do, you're best to just seek God first and wait because if not, you're going to have a bigger mess on your hands than you had to begin with because you moved ahead of what God was doing. In other words, what Abraham and Isaac said, when, why don't you sleep with your maiden and have a child? And that child was Ishmael. Basically, what they were saying is there's no way that God can do what he promised. And God hasn't done it yet, so he's not going to do it now. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and move and do it myself. Right. Be patient and walk in your, everybody say your, your. purpose. If that hasn't happened yet, maybe it's not supposed to have happened yet. The purpose of what you're going through, this is so good. The purpose of what you're going through might not be about what you're going through. It might be about you learning what you need to learn and becoming what you need to become. So many times we think it's about what do I do, what do I say, how do I do it, and we focus so much on what it is we're wanting to obtain, but God's really focused on what it is we're trying to become. Because what I've realized is what I desire or what I want to see happen, I'm really probably not even ready for it yet. And in not knowing what to do, what God's trying to do is to develop my faith and develop my trust and develop my character and to develop my heart so that when I walk in what it is he has for me, I will be able to sustain that and hold that and walk in character and walk in purity and glorify him and benefit others. So what happens is most of the time I'm like, man, nothing's going on. God, like, where are you? I've prayed about this. I've fasted about this. It, sometimes in my life I get tired of praying and fasting and reading the word. Amen. I'm trying to be as honest as I can before you. Because sometimes I just get, it's like I'm going hungry and nothing's happening. I'm praying, I'm being honest because I believe we live here, but we're so afraid to be honest because we almost feel like we're being sacrilegious. But I'm telling you the truth, faith works. And you will never outgive God. And if you fast and you pray and you read God's word in obedience, God will honor you and God Don't grow weary in well-doing. For in due season, you shall reap what you've sown. So what it tells me is the only way I'm not going to reap what I've sown and believed for is if I grow weary and give up. I'm here to tell you today in the name of Jesus, don't give up. Keep believing. Keep praying. Keep coming. Keep fasting. Keep reading. Keep worshiping. God is God and he is faithful. You can trust him. Walk in your lane. Walk in your purpose and believe and know that God is God. Amen. Blessed be in the name of the Lord God. It's a process. It's a process of growing. Sometimes I think, you know, I was talking about fasting and praying. Sometimes I think we, we fast to receive something, and really what I fast for is to die to myself and to learn right. Amen. who Christ is. Come on. Right. we got to get real. And then, Here's the thing is, well, yes, amen, preacher. That's right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> but if I could catch you on that day, That day when you're praying, crying out to God, and it feels like he's a million miles away. That day when you're fasting, and it feels like your belly's going to eat your belly. Your stomach's coming up. Come on, somebody. we got to get real and understand. Some, here, and here's the thing I want to relieve this tension. There are some times when I just don't know what to do, and I don't know when to do it, and I've just got to be still and let God be God. He's working on you and he's working on me. Here's number seven. You ready for this one? Learn what needs to be learned so you can be released into what's next. If you keep going through the same test and the same trial and the same valley, if you keep circling the same situation or the same circumstance, 
God's trying to teach you something that you've not yet learned. If it's the same thing over and over and over again, if it's the same thing with this person as it was with this person, if it's the same thing at this place as it was at this place, if it's the same, if it's the same thing over and over, here's what I want to tell you. Walking around something will give you a 360 degree view. But if you walk around it long enough, you'll become dizzy and frustrated. If you keep walking around the same thing, it's probably because God is trying to teach you something and you're wanting the next season to come. But God's saying you need to learn what I'm trying to teach you in this season because you will get to the next season and you'll be anemic in that season. Yeah, that's good. So we look at this. Number seven is this. Learn what needs to be learned so you can be released into your next season. Here's what I want to say about this is there's always a lesson to be learned. God doesn't waste anything. He doesn't waste anyone. He doesn't waste any time. He doesn't waste any circumstance. There's always something that God is doing, something that he's wanting us to learn, something that he's wanting us to see. It's not always about knowing what to do. It's about learning what I need to learn for what's next. Sometimes we're so worried about what, what do I do, and God's just saying, I want you to learn what it is and become what it is I want you to become. Know this. When you don't know what to do, God knows and sees you. He is for you, not against you. Now, these are just practical, simple things, because how many people have been there done that about the T-shirt? Sometimes you just don't know what to do. So they're practical things where you seek God and you don't do the wrong thing, you do the right thing, you don't produce it. All these things are practical. If you've written any of these down, these will help you. But I want to relieve the tension and tell you what I truly believe. Is God doesn't waste anything, even my mistakes. So here's what I want to say. If you don't have your eyes closed and your ears covered, and your heels dug in the ground, it's going to be hard for you to miss God, even if you feel like you've missed God. If your eyes are open, and your ears are open, and your heart is open, even when you don't know what to do, and you've done the wrong thing, God will still use that for your good and for his glory. The Bible says in Romans 8, this, that for know this, that God will work all things for our good to those that are called according to his purpose. And sometimes there are things that we don't know what to do. We don't, what to do when you don't know what to do. There's sometimes when you just keep on doing what you know to do, and there's sometimes where you just sit back and don't do anything and allow God to work and move on your behalf. But I'm telling you this today. That God sees and knows that he's for you. He's not against you. He sees your beginning from the end. He, <laughs> he's rejoicing over you now. And I think sometimes we live under too much bondage and too much pressure. And God's wanting to give us today his peace in the name of Jesus. And receive his peace and receive his word over our lives in Jesus' name. I want you to stand up right where you are. People, they have the sound of my voice. You just say, Pastor, I'm in a place where I'm just kind of going through a dry place, a weary place. I just feel frustrated. It just seems like what I try to do, it doesn't. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, you see every hand, you know every heart. I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you would draw near to every person in this room. I pray, Father, that you would draw near to every person who raised their hand today. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch their heart. Father, I pray that you would be glorified in their life. I pray that they'd feel your peace and they would feel your strength. I pray, Father, that all of us including those that raised their hands, will put these practical things, seeking God and counsel, seeking you first, standing still, and moving, and all the things that work in cooperation with what you're doing. Father, may we today, above everything, trust you. Trust you. May we not second-guess ourselves. 
May we not doubt ourselves. Once we've heard you or once we know what it is, Father, when we walk in it, may we walk in it with confidence and assurance that you have spoken, that you see us, and that you've heard us. Today, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every person in this room would feel your peace, that they would feel your love, that they would feel your strength. Holy Spirit, move in our midst right now. Move in our hearts and lives right now. Give us a peace that passes all understanding. Lord, reveal to us through your spirit and through truth what to do when we don't know what to do. Guide us, direct us, guard us, show us, teach us. Be glorified. Be glorified. Feel this real strong. Just everybody stay in an attitude of prayer and worship. Feel this real strong for someone in this room today. Feel like that God has spoken and he has showed you. But you're second guessing and you're doubting. In Jesus' name, remove that uncertainty. Remove that doubt. In the name of Jesus, bring clarity. Bring clarity right now. Bring clarity right now. John, can you sing a little bit of that heart of worship for me? I don't know what you're on there. I'm probably switching you up. But I want you to stay in an attitude of prayer right now. Stay in an attitude of worship. Sometimes we make things all about the wrong things. There's someone here today, you're walking in a condemnation that you need to shake off and break off of your life. You did what you knew to do, and you did what you thought you should do, and you did it in truth and sincerity. You did it as unto the Lord. Am I speaking to anyone? Just raise your hand if I am. Father, in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, you're so strong right now. When I felt that confirmation, boy, I felt the witness of the Holy Spirit sweep over us right now. Sweep over us right now, Holy Spirit. Bring your healing. There are times to come forward and kneel and pray. There are times to have hands laid on, but there are times that the Holy Spirit wants to do a work that only he can do. John, just keep playing and singing and worshiping. The Holy Ghost, move right now in our midst. There is now, therefore, no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. There's this difference between you doing what you want, when you want, how you want, than moving in the power of the Holy Spirit and feeling like, and then living under confidence. God says, no, you have been justified. Holy Spirit, just move right now in our midst. Move right now in our midst. Minister right now. You open up your heart. You open up your mind. You open up your spirit. The Holy Spirit is moving. We just got to strip it. This is just between you and the Lord. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's 
It's all about you. I made it about me. It's all about you. It's really about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 